<laughs> hey people, Broken Puppet, and this is how to draw a Chanju frog. Enjoy. Hey people, how to draw a Chanju. Now, Chanju is basically a sort of like a it's an Asian style frog sort of thing, and uh, sort of shut up on your doorstep, you know, when you're sort of like gonna come into money and have a coin in its mouth. It's a pretty cool design. And uh, yeah, so here we go. Mine's gonna be slightly modified, so I'll have little things, a couple of things in there which isn't traditionally in there, but I think it just makes it look cool. So just marking my top and low points. There we go. So I'm gonna start off with here, gonna get a little shape just in there. Circle just underneath. So it's going to be like the face, it's going to be his belly. I'm going to have one arm coming out, I think, this way. It's going to have a line there. Come back here. So you want the first part of the arm to be thinner, and the second part to be sort of like more bold. So almost like that teardrop shape. So start thin and go wider towards the hand area. Might have that here. It's a little rectangle here. I'm going to have like a, maybe a blade in his hand. That's not traditionally there. I just think it's going to be cool. So I want to make kind of sort of not exactly samurai, but maybe kind of sort of running kind of style. Cut a curve just through here. It's going to be where the mouth goes. Just do a circle shape just there, coming out of the mouth. It's going to have a little coin hanging out of his mouth. And uh, the coin is going to have a little square bit just in the middle. You're going to have a rope coming through it. Come across this way, around the head. And it's going to have some coins wrapped around it. So I'm going to have one coin there. One coin there. Maybe one there. One there behind his head. It's going to be crouching. So I'm going to have one oval shape just here. And this one kind of just like, you're not going to see too much end of the other end of the other, end of the other, end of the other leg. will be under there somewhere. And it's going to have his toes here. We'll go into more detail about the toes and everything. We just basically just in a minute we're just plotting where everything's gonna go. So other part of the leg's gonna go there. And then it's gonna curve back from here, come down here, and then his foot can go there. So oval shape, two thin lines, and just like a nice kind of curved air. That sort of shape, not like a banana kind of shape. Just for that foot. This arm we're going to have come out like this, and this is going to just be resting on his knee. Can move this coin slightly over, just there I think, so I've got a bit more room for his eye. So we're going to do a circle there just for his eye, and then we're going to create a loop, just come over the top of it like so. So start like sort of like circular there, and just come along across. So yeah, I just do a little line across, just like that. Just bring a little bit above that. You know where you're in the uh, circle line? Just put a little bit lower than it, and just bring that line across. And just create a little bulge there, which would have been like this part of the eye, just there. I'm going to have some clothes on him as well. I'm going to have like a little kind of Japanese kind of robe. So this will kind of curve around the outside of his arm. And then part of the robe will maybe sort of flare out here. Do some more detail lines and everything inside it. And this one again will just cover over this arm. And this robot might just come back round over there. I'm gonna have him standing on maybe a giant coin. It's gonna represent his good fortune. Turn some cloudy bits that will kind of come around the outside. I think that should do. So now we've done that, we sort of put out where everything goes, we can start detailing. I'm going to start off with the eye. The eye is always a good point to start with. So he's putting that oval shape. Quite sort of thick lines coming sideways. You don't want a dot, you know, frog's eyes are not dots. More like a lion. I'm going to bring a couple little lines just kind of curving off of this eye. Just to the side there. I have a little line just coming off the eye just here. Get slightly thicker as it gets further away. 
So it's kind of like a little point of it. This curve. Go with that, and I'm going to have a second curve line just coming in a little bit. Just there. This will kind of sort of like curve off to a point just there. So I'm going to strengthen that little line. And I'm going to bring in this mouth part. So you've got this big line that's going to come across here. And then I'm going to loop it around and just come back the other way. Just like so. And that line will kind of come down. And it won't come all the way across. We're just going to cut across a little bit. And this will go into his neck. Which will sort of like band here into another sort of, you know, line. And that will curve into his belly. That will go there. I was going to put this coin in now. I remember it's slightly at an angle, so it's going to be sort of like kind of overly shaped. Bring a little secondary line just to the side of it, just so you see the rim of the coin. Bring a little square on the inside, and just bring a little line just on the inside there, so it looks a little bit 3D. Have the light, a little bit of rope that's going to be coming out of it. You can curve under there. So you're not going to see this part of rope, but I'm just putting it in there so I kind of get a sense of where the rope goes. It's going to come down there, go into the center of this one. So do a little boxy bit. Do our circle shape around it. And go there to the second coin or into the third coin rather. I go around into that one that will go there. Now I'm going to have this coin, it's going to sit behind this sort of like bit of clothing. So you've got this one, got the coin here, and this one will sit in front. So, or is that too many coins? Yeah, screw it, uh, scrap that. I'm going to take out this one and just have it go back here. So this bit of shoulder will kind of like show through. So I'm just going to bring a line here. So we'll bring it down a touch, cross, down, up a little bit. Just create a few little sharp lines. Just coming off this close. We're going to the arm bit now, so we're going to bring this across, just strengthen that up. When we do this circle, this circle is going to sit over this, so just overlap this corner bit here. Bring that line down. You can have a few little, just sort of like little detail bits, you know, it's quite common, just like a little kind of lines coming down and across. And our toes, fingers, and toes are very long. I'm going to have these two sort of top fingers maybe coming out straight and the other two sort of coming around it, so. So, so spring two lines out. Towards the end of it, just do like a circle and just kind of have that loop around it. Okay, so this one sort of come out, circle, loop around it. And this one's going to have two short ones, so it's kind of like wrapping around this sword of his. So it's just like a rectangle handle. I mean, I'm not going to make it too long. Maybe about there. So just bring that line down, a little bit of an angle, straight up. I think actually I might have some rope around his waist as well. So I'm going to bring a line here, secondary line across. Go in the middle, maybe a secondary bit of rope, and this can kind of curve here, then that's going to kind of under loop. No one can kind of go there. So, this part of the leg, so just bringing that shape so the knees kind of slightly thicker on this but you know it's different to the hands it's right the other way you know as you get towards the ankle it gets thinner a few little those little, little detail lines similar to how we've done in the arm and the toes are very similar so it's all like 
long toes, sort of round edges. So I'm going to put one, two, three, four circles. Bring up my lines, getting thinner. I'll kind of connect up to the feet. This sort of thigh will sort of sit there. This calf bit will sort of kind of come over this part, so bring that there, curve that down. I'm quite similar to that one, but it's more towards the side, side angle, so bring a line across to circle, 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 circle. And just bring your lines thinner towards those circles. Very similar to this part of the arm, so I'm just going to bring this and be one circle there, one circle there, one there, and one to come off the edge. And because these hands kind of be kind of like bent up, so the fingers are kind of like this. So we'll come up and just kind of sit over that knee, and this one's just kind of kind of dangle off. Put a bit of rope just on that side of the arm, like so. Just reinforce this coin down here, the secondary line, just to show a bit of thickness to it. And that's pretty much for the line work, so I'm just going to put the this in now. And the Sharpie I was using, yeah, that's the one. So I'm going to use two different line weights, you know, Sharpie and uh, Unipin 0.8, I think. So I'm just going over the kind of lines I want to really stand out, you know, with the thick liner. You know, and then come in with a thinner liner for the detail parts. Now this robe, I will have some pattern work in it, I think. I haven't decided what pattern I'm going to do just yet. But I'm definitely going to have some sort of pattern work in there. Over the knee. Just make sure you don't go over the fingers, you want the knee to sit in between the fingers. Let's do this bit of rope so I don't overlap it. I often recommend doing like all the bits you kind of feel are going to be in front first. You know, that way you don't accidentally go over any lines that you want to sit in front. Little circle, a little bit just on the edge. Little circle, spring out, curve, curve, curve back. That's simple. So you can kind of see it's starting to take shape now.
couple of detail lines just inside this robe. So it's like keep lines fairly straight with the robe, you know, don't go too sort of crazy your lines, you know, too much curvature. So that's pretty much it for the uh, thick outline. And that's going to have all these little detail bits. All the bits kind of on the inside that want to show the shape. So, the little edge bit of coin. These little lines around the eye. detail lines just inside those legs and stuff she's like sort of curvy sort of lines really so sort of just bend to a point straight curve just follow the arm shape and you can't really go wrong with it to be honest not my best curve at the bottom take time with it make sure you get it right as usual I'm sort of going for it pretty quick so Mine won't be as perfect as I like it to be, to be honest, but and this right bit, just bringing diagonal lines, just coming across the inside of it. Some diagonal lines up the hill with a sword bit, a couple of lines across, and a little line up the center of a blade, like so. The clouds, I'm not going to do a hard line to, I do them with the colors when I do that. So now it's all going to a bit of shading. I'm going to use Windsor and brush markers. So I'm going to use black, I'm going to use some grey tones, and I'm going to come in with some colour afterwards. I'm going to find the other grey. There we go. So to start, we're going to flick in some black. Just mainly in little corners. Not too much of it, just a little bit, it's just here and there. Pretty there for the grey, I mean for the black to be honest. I'm just going to come in with grey and just work over that black and just blend it out. And I'm going to start building this up now. I'm going to start doing like some circular, you know, parts, just to build up a bit of sort of like texture. So sometimes I'm going to do sort of dark circles. Sometimes I might do just the line. And build this up. Pretty much when you get to like the edges, you know, I want to start building up, so like around the bottom of this neck. Sort of varying size, then got to be the same size. A little bit to the back of the head.
So I'm just in the arm. I'm not going to put too many arms and legs, just little bits here and there. Get my lighter grey, I'm just going to go around them. And I'll add a bit of shadow coming through them as well to really kind of mix them nicely. So that's it for like, you know, the uh, actual circles. And then like here on this curve, I'm gonna come up here, leave a little highlight just on the edge. Just work in, just to really kind of show the curvature. But on this side, just there. Just around these curves in the neck. Just on this part. Follow line through for the mouse so you can kind of keep telling the shape of it as it goes across. Might a little bit more ground that side bit. I'm not gonna go too crazy because a lot of it I will be telling the colour with the uh, or the shape with the colour. So it's just basically getting giving it a gist of shape, so you know where you're putting everything. from the top, over from the bottom of the coins. Just quite a little shine through the center of them. Just putting a little bit of dark gray just on certain little parts, just where it comes underneath the cloak, just towards the edge of the head. Nothing too much. So at this stage is just about building up that texture, you know, you want it to feel like toad skin. There we go. It's gonna do him, what colour should I do him? So you can pretty much do him any colour you want to be honest. I'm gonna do these bits yellow. I might have a mix of green and blue, I think. That could be cool. Blue, green, and a touch bit like sort of brown in certain areas. So I'm gonna flick in the green, just across some of these edge bits. Grab me blue. Look at this, just in a few little parts. Don't too much blue, just a little bit, just literally just here and there. Maybe some blue just around certain jointy parts. Put your green over it. I'm going to leave a lot of the edge bits, and I'm going to sort of bring in sort of yellowish lighter tones to complement and highlight. Just working in this green, just building it off those blues. Then this can go into give me some fleshy tones. Just coming with a slightly lighter flesh tone now, just to help blend it all out. Bring it all together. 
It's all pretty much fated nothing, it just helps bind it, to be honest. yellow just in those edge parts skin zone done. I'll put a little bit of orange in the eye. Just gonna flip a little bit of orange just in some parts of the coin. We'll then blend them out. Yellow. So you just work over those oranges till you kind of blend them. Purple in the eye. So purple like little streaks just coming through this part. A bit there. Just gonna grab me my red and work out what pattern to do in the uh through the top. So I'm gonna have some red lines coming across kind of straight the whole way through. You know I'm not really bending around the actual design parts. So what I might do is do a sort of squares coming out of the lines. So it'll be there, so this won't be Now Japanese pans are all kind of like sort of geometric, you can kind of make them up as you go along really. They don't have to be a specific type of pattern. But if you want to sort of like use like really traditional ones, just Google it, you know, there's loads out there. You know. So it's going to start in some clouds in the back. Same I normally do, so I'm just going to semi-circle these. It's good practice because these clouds are really good just for joining up. And just adding two designs, you know, it's perfect background filler. Just put that there. Just fold in those background parts. Always about like frogs and toes, you know, they're just so cool when they come down these kind of designs. You know, they really are such an underrated animal, I think, in the tattoo industry. They deserve to be tattooed a lot more than they actually are. And the art world, too, you know, they don't get used as much as they should.
cloudy bits in the background. Let's get this brown. It's going to flick in this brown, just come from the side. And from this side. A little bit in the center of that coin, a bit at the bottom. A little bit there, a little bit there. Grab that yellow. Now you can trick these coins out as well. You can put all little details inside these coins if you want. A little bit of blue, brown just needs hilt, and just a couple of white highlights, not too many. This is just a white Faber Castell pencil, and just like certain little edge parts, and bits on the shadow shape. So, like here, kind of got its neck kind of curved this way, so a line at the edge, a little line in the center, a little line on that lip, a little line down there, just down from that elbow. A bit of light shine just in that little edge part of the eye. And just a little bit in the coins. So pretty much just on those bottom parts there, just covering up the edges. In that blade, a little bit in the tip of his fingers, the toes, a little curve for the ankle, and there you have it. That's how to draw a chanju. I hope you like it. You know, you can sort of modify other ways, you can do different color schemes, you can add a little bit of extra bits to it, take away bits. I mean, traditionally, they usually have like three legs, but um, I like doing with two. I just think three legs looks a bit weird, to be honest. You know, but yeah. Hope you like it. Comment, subscribe, like, yada, yada, yada. And a dragon puppet. And I'll see you next time. Peace.